Hello my friends, recently I have been asked by a lot of people about my Tarkov settings, my post effects, and in general how to make the game run better. I'm gonna show you a couple things I try and do regularly, and what I do if I happen to do a fresh install on my Windows or Escape from Tarkov. Also, I want to show you a couple programs that have been a massive help to me personally, especially on my last PC, which was somewhat struggling to run EFT at times. But before I jump into those, let's open up the launcher and get that out of the way. All right, once we're in the launcher, click on the little arrow on the top right and make sure you clear your cache regularly. I personally try and do it once a day before I start playing, as it does give me a much more smoother experience over time compared to if you don't clear the cache regularly. Next up is the logs. Click on the logs there. It opens up a different folder, and these are basically files required for just bug reports this just clutters up your drive you don't need them unless you're doing bug reports regularly and these are basically cluttered up ever since you installed tarkov so if you've never done this before you might get a lot of space from just deleting them so just select all or Control a and then Control d to delete all of them and then make sure to later on delete them from your recycle bin as well and then to finish off the launcher stuff, go to settings and make sure when I launch the game, exit the launcher completely is selected. As this is especially helpful if you have a very low end PC. At that point, you're looking to get every single resource you can possibly can for EFT. So that is very, very helpful. And then once you've done that, click on the game directory here. It opens up your EFT folder. Right click on Escape from Tarkov and go to properties. Go under compatibility and make sure disable full screen optimizations is checked. And then click on change high DPI settings and make sure you override high DPI scaling behavior. And then click OK, click apply, click OK. And then do the same for Escape from Tarkov BE1 as well. Compatibility, disable full screen optimizations. Override, OK, Apply, and OK. And that's it when it comes to messing with the Tarkov files for now. Next thing I would like you to do is go into your Windows search bar, type in Resource Monitor. If you open that up, it opens this window here. And then switch to the Memory tab. And this is all of your memory right here. It shows what is being used and how much of it and so on and so forth. And as you can see here, there's a big little blue bar, which is standby memory. This is basically, as I understand, memory that is used up by Windows in hopes that you probably might want to use it again in the future, which is nice and all. But if you don't have enough memory in the first place, and we all know Tarkov likes to eat up as much memory as possible. I'm going to show you a cool little program to make sure that this is the lowest amount possible. This was huge back when I was using just 16 gigabytes of RAM and I highly recommend every single one of you use it even if you have 32 gigabytes of RAM and I personally use it as well. And that program is empty standby list. Now, for some reason, the original website is not available, but I was looking for it on Google and I found it on Reddit that you can use the, the web archive basically to get onto this website and then you can download it anyway. So click on the exe right here or the download link and it should start any day now. All right, three days later, here we go. Keep it. Once it's downloaded, it's going to be in your downloads folder or wherever you download your stuff, I guess. What you want to do then is open up your this PC. You can basically put this program wherever you want. I personally go into my local disk and I just create a new folder called empty standby list and I just drag it into that and then if you open up the resource monitor now I can show you what it does one thing you do want to do is go in there right click it and give it admin privileges by right click properties and go in under compatibility and make sure you run this program as admin and then as you can see right now standby list has already increased to seven gigabytes so if you run it once it throws it all the way down to zero and it cleans out everything that is not being used by windows it's obviously going to be extremely annoying to do it manually every single time so what you want to do is go to your search bar again type in task scheduler open it up over here you have the task schedule library selected we're going to make it a little smaller i'm going to close this in the background for now and then scroll all the way down here until you have an empty space, right click and create new task. Now you can call this whatever you want, but obviously we want to know what it is. So call it empty standby list, for example. And then what you want to do in the general tab here is make sure you check the run whether user is logged on or not. Because otherwise, every time you, this program runs in the background, it will tab you out of the game. So obviously you do not want that to happen. Check the run with the highest privileges and then configure for Windows 10. Even if you're running this on Windows 11, you want to select Windows 10 configuration for this one. Another thing you have to do is go to change user or group, click on advanced and then press find now. Scroll all the way to the bottom until you see system, highlight it, click OK, click OK. And once you've done that, we can move on to the triggers. Once you're in triggers, click on new. And then if for some reason the begin the task is not set to on schedule by default, select on schedule from here, select one time, and then we can move on down here where we can check the repeat task every box. We're going to set this to five minutes. You can also set it to 10 minutes, 15 minutes or whatever, but 
I don't see any reason why you shouldn't have it on five minutes as it would clean the standby list more frequently, which means you will have more RAM available. And then we're going to change the for a duration of box to indefinitely. And then we are done here. Just click OK. And that's it. We're going to move on to the actions tab. And once again, you guessed it. We're going to click new and action has to be selected. Start a program from here. You click browse and go onto your this PC local disk and for me it's going to be empty standby list but basically you have to navigate to the folder where you put the empty standby list executable just double click on that or just click it and press open and that means that we should have it set up perfectly press ok and as you can see now if you go on to the library here you should see the empty standby list is right here after trigger repeat every five minutes indefinitely so once again if we open up resource monitor and go under the memory tab you can see the standby here it should clean every five minutes without you having to worry about it but if you want to speed it up now you can just right click it run and as you can see it should clear out the standby list and that's it that's all you have to do just leave it in the background and it will do it for you from now on but obviously in the future if you reinstall your windows you're gonna have to do it again from scratch another thing i would like you to do is right click on your taskbar click on task manager go under performance click on memory and then check your RAM speed. If this is anything but the RAM speed you paid for, there is a good chance that your XMP is disabled. So what you have to do is go and enable it in your BIOS. I will show you myself, but every single motherboard and BIOS is different. So just Google your motherboard and how to enable XMP and then just do that. And that should increase your performance pretty drastically as well. Another program that I have been using for the longest time is Process Lasso and you can get it for free from uh, bitsum.com. I'll put the link into the description and what this allows you to do is optimize your games or your processes even further. Once you have it downloaded and installed, it looks like this. It is completely free to use, but after 30 days, you get this uh, little pop up every now and then that recommends you buy it, but you don't have to. Uh, in order for us to change the processes they have to be running so make sure escape from tarkov is running in the background as it is for me as you can see right here so next thing look for escape from tarkov here just click on anything just press e and then you'll get to escape from tarkov eventually right click it and the first thing i change or you should change is cpu priority always and then set it to high i personally use normal because for some reason on this PC specifically, my live streams and my recordings get really, really laggy as it takes more resources away from other programs. And if I have OBS and EFT both set on high, then it just starts interfering with each other. So for now I have EFT on high, but obviously I have a decent enough PC to not worry about this. So, but if you're not live streaming, you should be fine. Even if you're recording your gameplay, this should not interfere. But if it does happen, just know you might want to switch it back to normal, but for now set it to high. And the reason you want to do it always so is so that every single time you launch the game, it sets it for you. So next up is the IO priority. Change that to high as well. I have it on high. Don't have any problems with that. Next and last thing I do here is just induce performance mode. And that should make your game a lot, lot smoother as well. One thing you can do as well is set CPU affinity to disable SMT. For me personally, it didn't change anything. I didn't lose performance. I didn't gain performance. So I don't know if it works or if it doesn't. I've seen people on Reddit say that it does give them a bit of a boost. So you can try it if you want. If not, if you want to skip it, then that's fine as well. But if you try it and it works or it doesn't work, uh, I would appreciate it if you'd let me know in the comments and maybe I'll have to give it another go in the future. Another thing you want to do is go to your search bar and type in run. And then you want to type in this right here, which is sysdm.cpl. It opens up your system properties. You want to go under advanced, go to performance and then advanced again. And here you find virtual memory. As you can see here, it says a paging file is an area on the hard disk that Windows uses as if it were RAM. So basically it uses your hard drive space as RAM. I don't know why I repeated that. What you want to do here, I personally use system managed size because I have a decent enough rig to run Tarkov without problems. But when I had 16 gigabytes of RAM on my old PC, this completely removed my stutters. I went to custom size and I set it to 36,000, which is 36 gigabytes of your hard drive space or hard disk space. Your, your only concern should be if you have enough hard disk space to do this, as this will create a separate file, which will be which will then be 36 gigabytes in size. Test out 36 gigabytes and see if you can go lower. Just press set here and then press OK. And then you have to restart your PC and you're done. But I'm going to go with cancel because I don't want to change it myself personally right now. Next up is the NVIDIA control panel. Right click on your desktop and open this up. If you have an AMD, unfortunately, I cannot help you. I'm sorry. Go to the program settings. And on here, if you don't have Escape from Tarkov, just click add and go to the executable of Escape from Tarkov. And then just copy these. I find this to be 
what works best for me and i think it's overall pretty good in terms of uh, performance i don't really have anything set here on quality so it should be all good for performance just copy these and you'll be good to go and now we can finally move on to the in-game settings first things first in the game tab for me personally automatic ram cleaner and only use physical cores does absolutely nothing no performance gained or lost fov is another one of those things that absolutely does nothing for me but that being said, on my last PC, which wasn't the greatest gaming PC to ever exist, this affected me quite a bit actually. I, I think I gained about 6 or 7 frames just by reducing this from 70 all the way down to 60. Or from 60 to 50, I can't remember, but I gained frames by lowering the FOV, so this might be something you might want to consider. I also, if you have head bombing on 1, you are just weird. Turn it down. It doesn't have any performance gain, but why would you want to be bouncing around the map? That's just odd moving on to the graphics tab you obviously want to play at your native resolution whatever your monitor is i wouldn't change that ever screen mode i recommend full screen i play borderless because i alt tab a lot when i'm streaming it helps me make the alt tabbing kind of seamless so it doesn't get stuck on the black screen for a second or whatever but in terms of performance i recommend full screen now texture quality i used to play on high for the longest time I'm testing out medium right now. It doesn't have a very big impact in general, but I've noticed on streets I gain a huge amount of FPS, but it's only on streets. If I play customs, I switch from medium to high, it's like one or two FPS. So I feel like having this on low is almost no difference in terms of FPS if you move it on to medium, but medium to high might be a couple frames. In general though, if you play a lot of streets, probably want to try it on medium but if you go other maps you can bump it up to high as well and you shouldn't really have any problem same with shadows as well it's a pretty small impact but i like it on low because i feel like it gives me a small edge because some of the shadows are in the distance they aren't as impactful so it's easier to see players in the distance if they are in a shadow for example now object lod is one of those things that has a pretty big impact from two to four uh, at least was on streets that's where i tested most of these settings because that's like the most impactful map in general so for me personally i'm gonna play it on two sometimes i might bump it up to 2.5 but it's gonna be two for the majority of my uh, game time same with overall visibility anything above a thousand i feel like it's a waste of time because you don't really see much further than a thousand meters anyway so i keep it on 1000 and it does have a pretty decent impact if you go from uh, 1000 to 3000 as well so I recommend keeping this at 1000 or if you have a very low end PC, go on 400. Anti-aliasing is a pretty small impact if you go from off to TAA. So if you play without NVIDIA DLSS, for example, feel free to bump this up to TAA. It shouldn't be that big of a problem. The thing with super sampling is that if you go higher, obviously you're going to introduce a lot more detail. So it's going to kill your frames. But down sampling, it just removes detail a bunch. So going downsizing, down sampling, you gain a ton of FPS. Super sampling, you lose a ton. I would just recommend keeping it on 1x off. If you really, really struggle for frames, then maybe consider down sampling, but I would never go super sampling. Now, NVIDIA DLSS is one thing that I will never play this game without again, I don't think, unless I get some sort of NASA PC that can run this game 100 plus FPS without it. I'm on quality right now. I will never consider going under quality though, because it does take away a small bit of detail. It's not anything crazy. You can counter it with sharpness. For example, I think default sharpness is 0.6. I play 0.9. I've tried 1.2 as well. I feel like it's a little too sharp at that point, but NVIDIA DLSS, I gain about 20, 30 FPS on streets. So I highly, highly recommend NVIDIA DLSS. Or if you don't have an RTX 20 series or a higher card, obviously you can't use it. In that case, I recommend AMD FSR. I don't know how big of a difference is between FSR 1 and 2, but I know that I gained a ton of FPS when I was playing on my GTX 1070, so I highly recommend trying at least one of these. If you can, if you don't have DLSS, try FSR 1.0 or 2.2 as well. And yes, you can use it on a GTX graphics card as well. FSR does not require you to have a card that's released by AMD, so if you have a GTX 10 series, try AMD FSR and I'm sure it'll do you wonders. Now, when I was testing HBAO, it was a pretty small impact on streets. I was testing it in an offline mode. So from now on, I'm going to test it on high for a while. But I, I feel like in an online raid, it's going to be a pretty big impact and I might turn it back off. So test this out yourself. I don't know. I'm just not sure. But like I said, from my testing, it was a pretty small impact. So for now, I'm going to go with HBAO on high, but I might switch it later on. SSR is uh, one of those things that I can't live without. It has a massive impact. Obviously, it's depending on the amount of reflections around you. I'm always going to set it to high, but it does kill a lot of your frames. So you have to be wary of that. If you have a low-end PC, then 
most certainly you want to turn it off. Anisotropic filtering is another one of those that has a decent impact on the game itself. I don't know why it's on. I am playing it on per texture from now on. If you have a low end PC, definitely try off. If you feel like you can spend a couple of extra frames, then I recommend per texture, but I feel like on is a little bit too much of an impact for uh, me personally. And lastly, Nvidia Reflex is... I used to play on plus boost, but for some reason this wipe, it is completely broken. I don't know if they fixed it. I don't think they have. So for now, I'm going to play with it off because it brought me down to like 30, 40 frames from like 100. For now, it's going to be off. If they fix it in the future, I really preferred it when it was on plus boost. So keep that in mind. Sharpness has no impact on, on your performance whatsoever. So that's just personal preference, how you like your visibility of the game. All of these down here, for me, they're turned off. They're, they just take performance and they just look terrible. Mip streaming is one of those things you might try on a very low end PC, but you have to mess with these settings yourself because quite frankly, I don't have enough experience and, and I don't want to recommend you something that I don't know nothing about. So this one, I'm going to leave up to you. Let's move on to post effects. Now, these are my post effects settings and post effects definitely impact your frame rate as well. For me on an offline raid, it was up to 10 FPS. I feel like in an online raid, it's probably slightly more. So keep that in mind. These are mine, but they are going to impact your FPS as well. So be careful. And binaural audio, I don't think it really impacts your FPS wildly. Me personally, I just don't like it. I still get some weird like sound artifacts and uh, it's just uncomfortable to listen to. So for me, it's off for now, but feel free to turn it on or let me know if you've had it on for a while. Maybe it works and maybe I'll give it another go at some point. And obviously controls, they don't have any impact on your performance. But here they are in case you are wondering. I'll scroll through them. And that's about it, my friends. I hope you uh, gained at least a couple of frames from this or some stability in your performance. If you wouldn't mind, like the video, subscribe to my channel, maybe turn on the notifications as well, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.